Hello, crafty people out there in the cyber world, and welcome to the Stitch Mistress um, podcast. My name is Molly, and um, this is episode number one, and um, hopefully there'll be a lot of other episodes coming up after this. Um, to tell you a little bit about myself, I am a home sewist. I'm self-taught. I also am a home knitter. Um, so this is going to be um, a podcast about sewing. It's going to be about knitting. I find that I do a lot more sewing in the in the summertime when it's warmer. And then knitting, of course, I get into in the wintertime. Because then you start to think about those like cuddly sweaters and scarves and hats that you want. Whereas, um, of course, in the summertime you think, oh, I'd really like this nice sundress or a pair of shorts or uh, something along those lines. Um, I, I ha do have um, a fashion background, but more on the sales end than actually on the uh, design end. I also, many years ago in another life, uh, did some costume work for some independent films. Um, so I have that in my background. Um, but mostly it's just the love of fashion that always really drives me. And not just like the love of fashion, but also the love of how do I describe it? Like a lot of the times, like I'm looking for something and I'm looking for something like very specific in my mind. So that was one reason that I started to do my own stuff was because it's like I'd see something in the store and it was almost right, but not quite what I had in mind. So of course, when you do it yourself, you can do it exactly the way you want. Um, the other thing is that, um, a lot of these podcasts talk about, um, fast fashion and I really agree with that completely because I find my closets just overflowing with, um, cheaply made garments that after a year I end up just donating, um, as opposed to things that are made better, that I've taken some time like I said before, to really think about exactly what is going to suit me and that it's going to be lasting years and that it's going to be suited for my own style, not to pick up some of the trends, but suited, suited for my own style, um, which is really my own thing. Um, I guess it's a little bit of a retro 80s thing because um, I'm from downtown and I was an 80s girl. So um, I'm trying to think what else. So, I mean, that's basically, oh, and the other thing besides the um, fast fashion and wanting to just get away from um, cheap consumerism. Um, uh, this is about crafting but certain political um, beliefs for myself as well, um, having to do with um, bringing the production of goods back to the United States. And I'm a very liberal person, but that's one agenda that I do really believe in, that we need to, um, we, we, have, we have the ability to make the best stuff in the world. So, um, so we need to bring that back home. Um, but that's all I'll say about that. I'm actually a very liberal person, but that's the only place that that I take a little bit more of a conservative agenda. Um, so, um, so I think that that's it. And we can move on for me to talk more specifically about some different projects that I've been sewing. Okay, so the first thing that... Um, of course, um, I wanted to make a me made, uh, I wanted to wear a me made um, outfit. Um, and just turn this around here, and you can see that this is the Zaria dress. It's by Pauline Alice. Now, 
if it, one of the many things that I adore about um, our community is that we are able to get these amazing PDF patterns and we can access style from all over the world. Now, the Zaria dress right here is, this is Pauline Alice, okay? And um, she's from France. She's a French designer. Lovely. It means that um, a home sewist like myself in, oh, by the way, I live in Mount Kisco, New York, can have access to Parisian fashion. So that's kind of exciting. And I can do it from the, um, from the comfort of my own home. So that's really exciting also. Um, so here is the Zaria dress. Now, let me tell you a little bit about what I did with my Zaria dress. And I'm going to put that in really close. Okay, so I actually made this view over here. And I actually made it twice, okay? Because um, there were a couple changes that I had to make for me. Okay, so you'll notice that there's a very high neckline and sleeves with this um, view. I don't really like a high neckline. I, I think that um, I'm very happy with this part of my body here. Um, other parts maybe uh, not so happy. We'll get into that later in terms of fitting. Um, so uh, that's a part, and I like to have, um, I like to feel that my neck is kind of open. I tend to wear a scarf a lot. But I don't like um, I don't like a very high neckline. So I'm going to show you actually what I did is I actually turned the neckline, the top over here around. See? Okay. So I made the back, the front, and I made the front, the back. Okay. So that's that's one way that I changed um, the pattern, okay? The other thing um, that I did is I don't really, I don't like sleeves, that's another thing. I like my neck to sort of be exposed and I kind of like my arms to be exposed also. That's another part of my body that I feel really happy with, but also um, I have, a, it's not fat, it's muscle right here in my arms because um, I am a single mother. I do like a lot of my own uh, work around my house and I'm also um, a working mother. So I'm very physical and I like to have this, a lot of freedom of movement. So that brings um, me to um, another, um, Another thing about the Zaria, another change that I actually made. I see this little thread there that shouldn't be there, right? Okay, the another thing that I made, I made um, bust adjustment on this. Zaria is cut for a B. It's cut for a B cup. So um, I used to be a B cup. <laughs> but not anymore. So I, um, I made a bust adjustment there. So I have a nice ease of motion right here. This is great. You know, it's not pulling over here. Feels great. Okay. And this is a beautiful pattern, by the way, if I haven't said it already, it's a great pattern and it's so easy. I mean, I made this super duper quick. Okay, so so that was another change I made. Also, I'll show you this. I lengthened it a bit. Okay, it's supposed to be kind of mini like that. I lengthened it. Um, 
I'm just I'm just not comfortable anymore to wear things uh, that um, short. Um, I was looking actually for um, basically a Lily Pulitzer style shift dress, something that would be very comfortable and very easy to wear uh, in the summer that I could wear it to um, work, but I could also wear it uh, to the pool. Um, and I didn't want, um, I wanted a little bit more, um, you know, of a modest look. Um, but, you know, uh, some years ago, I would have gone for the more sexy look. But, um, but in general, oh, and I didn't show you the other thing about this dress that's so awesome, is the way that the pocket construction, which is really just wonderful look at that isn't that beautiful i love the way that i mean the the way that the 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 seam comes in and becomes these great pockets it's just fabulous and um and about the fabric that i used i actually used and i like to do this a lot i'm i it, it, if i have fabric around the house i use it you know, um, I will, this is a vintage tablecloth, and these were, at one time, a pair of curtains. I take my inspiration from Scarlett O'Hara in Gone with the Wind. So, um, and I like actually how these old, um, these old curtains are all faded, naturally faded by years uh, in the sun. Um, you know, uh, and, and I've, I, the, they were uh, big curtains and I've actually like used all of the fabric because I, it, it just like the color and the fade, I just loved. I had to send away for a couple things that were sort of similar to that. Um, so that's, that's actually fabric and I love going to the thrift stores and at the thrift stores I'll go and peruse what do they have in tablecloths, sheets, curtains? I mean, you know, there's some, you know, you find stuff that's like really funky. And um, I am a print girl. Um, I'm not really, I don't want to say boring, um, but I like a lot of, you know, pizzazz and action. Because for me, there are those who would say that color block solids are timeless. But I am a print girl. So for me, a fun conversational print is actually timeless. I'll wear it year after year after year. And I love that this is like patchwork because, like I say, I was looking for something that was in a Lily Pulitzer um, style. So that's, so that's that about the Zaria dress. Um, again, Zaria dress, Paulina Lise. Um, ooh la la, uh, tremendous. And I bought the PDF pattern. And if, you, if people are interested, put it down in the show notes there. And I will give you um, my really super easy method that I have figured out with, um, you can see my adjustments here that I made. Um, super easy method to um uh to um put together pdf um patterns i can put them together really fast and I, that i see i saw one video it was awesome where she she did it on a um a sliding glass door i thought that that was very clever i don't do that but i do it um on my work table um, with just um, packaging tape that you get from like the, the UPS store or something like that and that you use for boxes. Zoop, zoop, zoop. And, um, and then I cut as, as I go. Um, if people are interested in that, then leave it down there and um, I'll show it to you. I'll do a little tutorial. Um, so, okay, so 
just Pauline Elise Zuria dress, awesome. And I plan to make this again, um, maybe this summer because I made this last summer and I think I may have made Zuria dress the previous summer. So there you go, talk about timeless. Okay, so the next thing that I want to show you, you'll see it's on the dress form here. I sort of put it a little bit out of sight because I didn't want you to see it too quickly. Um, is the uh, licorice, licorice dress by Colette. Okay, so here is Colette's version. Okay. So obviously I changed this a lot also. And this is actually the second time I made this one. I'm going to show you another picture that she did. For the Colette, I mean for the licorice. Mm -hmm. This might be a little bit more similar to um, mine because of the um, body type. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Okay, and I'm going to tell you how I changed it. And here it is. It's from the kind of falling apart. The Colette um, sewing handbook. I know that comes uh, uh, that um, comes across backwards. What are you going to do? Um, but um, I'll put it down in the show notes again. Um, so um, I love um, one of the ways that, um, that I've been learning how to sew um, is by um, going through books. Of course, I love Love It First Stitch by Tilly and the Buttons. I love this book, uh, Colette Sewing Handbook. Um, and um, and uh, I'm also there's another book that I really want to get through, which is Berta Style, uh, Sewing Vintage Modern, where they teach you a little bit about how to, um, here, that's this one, okay, um, how to, um, uh, how to adjust different, um, patterns, a little bit of, um, pattern making and making adjustments, which I'm very interested in. The Colette as well is tremendous for, um, for fitting uh, different parts of the book where she talks about um, fitting. And um, it really is true. I have to say that I think the fitting part is a little bit tedious because once I put my pattern together, I don't really love to just cut out the pieces and just sew and, you know, move on with it. But the truth is that if I take the time to do the adjustments, um, <clears throat> I end up with just a much better garment because if I went ahead and just, um, you know, rushed on into um, cutting out the pattern pieces and, uh, and, and, and just sewing it up, um, I'm not going to get the, the different adjustments that I personally need. And I'll tell you, my adjustments are um, uh, bust adjustment, waist adjustment, oh God, so sad. And actually my hips are narrow. So, um, and then the, the issue, I actually have to make that arms uh, wider because, um, like I say, I've got um, a muscular torso. Um, so, okay, so that's, so let me talk to you about what I, and I'm not finished with this. This is the second, um, the second time I've done this pattern. I'll, I'll show you next show I'll show you the first one the first one I did with sleeves as usual I didn't do the sleeves um, just because um, I don't like sleeves that much and um, I was a little lazy too um, but she has these nice flouncy sleeves so who knows maybe I'll get ambitious at the end and I'll decide that um, 
I'm going to add this. Okay. Let me get that in there. Okay. Again, um, I, she has this collar. Let me show it to you. I'm going to show you that second picture because I think that that's, looks more like what I am making. mark this so I okay so okay I didn't like the uh, sort of cow neck collar it's not exactly a cow neck but I I just didn't get into that like I say I like this area to be a little bit more exposed and I, I didn't want that like flouncy thing to me I'm not into it I want something that looks a little bit more neat and tailored at that um, juncture. So, again, I flipped it around, right? There's the front, and there's the back. How about that? And I also adjusted it and made the, um, the neckline uh, a bit uh, more of a boat neck. Um, again, I, I like to feel very free in that area of my body, so this worked out um, well for me. And like I say, it's the second time I tried it before, and I was like, what happens if I turn this around? That's what's great about like home sewing. You can change it any way you want to. And I ended up with um, this thing. It's like, um, I don't know, Chelsea collar, uh, sailor collar. Um, what I had to do, and I'm not finished here, but it's not going to be attached in the back. If I attached it in the back, I'd have real trouble um, putting it on. Um, this is all clipped up here because it's attached with um, bias tape. Um, and... Um, and uh, I like that tutorial from Made Every Day where she teaches you how to make the bias tape. So um, that's why it's all clipped up here. I got to still finish that. There's the bias tape. So it's bias tape all around. It's attached over here to the dress right into the shoulder seam right here. And then anyone that it's not attached there but and then I'm gonna finish this with bias tape over here and that's it and the zipper in the back so that way I, uh, I've already made this dress once I can put it on um, what else did I do I think I also did a bust adjustment over here and I haven't finished the bottom yet. I haven't hemmed the bottom yet. This one, actually, I might make a little shorter than the um, midi length because it is not a, um, it's not a, um, it's not as, um, I'm not gonna say form fitting, but you know what I mean. It, it, it's 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 flouncy it's probably actually going to end up being about the same three inches above the knee is usually about where I where I land so and I've got it pinned up with clothes pins because um, with the collar and the collar facing and the inside of the collar which again oh look at that Oh my god and I think that this is actually from fabric.com but I'm gonna have to check and then I'll put that down um, and I love this little conversational print it's like a traveling theme it's got um, some really cute little um, palm trees and balloons and all sorts of things having to do with traveling and then again <laughs> this was like a sheet um, and it has a nice little <laughs> ditzy floral on it. I thought it was adorable. I love the way it's a little old and faded. 
I just like that a lot. Um, so, um, so anyway, um, so that's what I'm did. That's what I'm doing. There's going to be an invisible zipper in the back. We'll see about that. I'm like I say, I'm self-taught home sewist. I would say I'm a little bit of a confident beginner or somewhat towards intermediate uh, intermediate sewist. Um, uh, probably my knitting is a little bit actually more advanced. I've been doing it a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to be doing that invisible zipper. So I'm really excited for that. I have the zipper right over here. There it is, darling. Okay. I have to send away for the special zipper foot. Um, and, um, you know, so we'll see what happens when this is all done. Um, I have, um, I have tried it on and it fits great and I'm really happy with the adjustments um, that I made on it. I really, um, uh, I'll show you the other version, it really fits like a glove. So again, <clears throat> I read somewhere, I can't remember exactly, but it said, you know, oh, um, adjusting your patterns may really, you know, take a long time and whatnot, so consider um, using the same patterns over again once you've adjusted it. Um, and I think that that's a great idea because one pattern, you can change it in a lot of different ways. You can make a lot of different variations. So that is plenty for my first episode. Um, if you like my show and anything, anything that you want to say to me, leave it down there. Um, maybe you can even subscribe, um, check out my Facebook page, which is, um, at the stitch mistress, all, um, one word, um, and, uh, and, and you can see a little bit more about me there. Um, thank you. Have a great day and stay crafty.